now you will uh, open the floor for questions, but we would like to start with the panelists first. Do we have questions? Okay, we have some questions already on the screen. So we will get to answer this first and then first of all I really enjoyed all the presentations but I think it's not relevant to Egypt sorry Egypt is liberated even more than Turkey with the exception of Cairo Airport so if we want to project on the uh, five-year expansion and the expected results in order uh, not to get lost egypt airports are liberated with the exception of cairo international airport so when dr abla says that when all airports in egypt were liberated we achieved a milestone but we need to calculate that and what happens if we liberate Cairo International Airport and why do I want to liberate Cairo Airport because we want to increase the number of tourists and we allow that for any charter operator to bring people from any point in the world to Cairo so it's it's very good a uh, study in a general sense and it's a quantitative study but I am referring to the situation in Egypt uh, Dr. Uh, Meg jumped to certain parts my question is are there any reservations on the experience of other countries uh, did the flag carriers suffered any job uh, loss? Are there any kind of reservations? What about the situation of tourism before and after open skies uh, mechanisms? And are there any countries experience that uh, are relevant or close to Egypt's experience? Thank you for the valid uh, question. If all uh, Egypt airports are liberated, then what is uh, the effect of liberating Cairo airport? Um, good morning, and I want to thank the Egyptian Center for Economic Studies for this kind invitation because I started my experience in the tourism sector in 2005 through uh, a study done by the uh, Egyptian uh, Center on the Gray Area of liberating air uh, transport in a general uh, sense going beyond open uh, sky uh, policies and the liberation uh, of air transport was identified and over 13 years was there any kind of development uh, materializing? And uh, I'm sorry, no. The situation is the same as 2005. And just as Captain Sam Hafni said, all the touristic airports are liberated and open to any operators, and it's normal in all the countries, even in uh, Morocco, they want to protect the hub uh, airport. And of course, that uh, should be under the control of the national uh, airline. But we have many other alternatives. And I want, allow me to disagree with you now I'm wearing the hat of the professor of economics please allow me to intervene in order to maximize the benefit of this symposium we have other session on the situation in Egypt, the different scenarios and the recommendations so be because now you're referring to Egypt's situation, so we don't want to tackle that now. 
I'm asking you, do you have any additional remarks? Are there other countries that we neglected? Are there any adverse uh, effects to liberation? To the best of my knowledge, no. And as for the four questions posed here, I don't have any reservations on the results of the study. And of course, the tourism significantly uh, developed and the number of tourists significantly increased after applying open sky uh, policies. Of course, there are other experiences in other countries that were not uh, studied that are close to the situation in Egypt. So Jordan, uh, Tunisia did that with certain reservations, but uh, Jordan is a really good uh, example due to the good effects on tourism this policy had. Thank you so much, uh, doctor. As for the tourism situation before and after uh, liberation, so liberating the transport sector is not the only reason for the development. So for example, Turkey, uh, the visa facilitation, uh, the, the routes, so the success uh, is not only built on uh, liberation or liberating the air transport sector. I won't add much. Uh, first of all, of course, good morning, and it's a great honor to be uh, here among you today. You almost covered everything. But if you want to compare the situation uh, uh, with other uh, countries, whether uh, the situations the study uh, tackled or other countries, we might use the word milestone, especially in economy. And I'm not here referring only uh, to tourism. Of course, open sky uh, policies help much uh, tourism, but it also helps economy. So the traffic of flow among uh, countries uh, or inside countries will say a lot. So as Mr. Haney uh, said, domestic flight prices. So that might be a, a barrier to businessmen uh, want to travel to sign agreements. So a European uh, flights is cheaper than the flight from Cairo to any other city here. So, of course, the benefit is great, not uh, only for the tourism sector, though, with, uh, or despite the fact that it will get the lion's share, but also the economy uh, will uh, benefit to a great uh, extent. And, for example, the first national uh, project on uh, modernizing uh, routes and the cost is really high, but uh, uh, the return is finally uh, distributed on uh, all the benefits we will get soon. I will give you the floor, and then we would like to open it up for questions. Uh, one important thing that we should uh, touch upon, and I think that the center will take that into consideration, the econometric uh, model we develop you are not liber we are not uh, liberating the sector but you should fix other uh, variables because of course the development in uh, turkey was not attributable uh, only to uh, liberating this is very uh, complex also the increase in the gdp is not directly related to this uh, Policy. I would like to ask you, Dr. Uh, Abla, to take this fact into consideration. We don't want to bring tourists here to suffer or to decide not to come back again. So we need to care for the infrastructure and the problems facing uh, tourists here. 
Any other questions here? Captain uh, Samah reviewed uh, his general study, and it's a general one. I'm sorry, the mic is not working. the indicators I think there is a problem there's a technical glitch with the microphone here The question that um, Captain Zema uh, poses is important. Uh, if this is the effect uh, of liberalization um, uh, as agreed uh, or as found out by all the stakeholders, uh, we have some certain limits of uh, liberalization. Why don't we get the same results? I think that this should be the, the subject uh, on the study. Dr. Mona, the floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to uh, echo what Mr. Uh, Haney said. I do not work uh, neither in um, aviation nor tourism, but I had a different perspective. I have two questions. Um, in the uh, when it comes to international experiences, what are the uh, the effects of liberalizations on the national career in terms of the revenues, in terms of uh, the personnel? I know some of the answers, but not um, not not fully. Um, second question: As you give us uh, the absolute definition or the definition of absolute liberal liberalizations, but you find no country opted for that. Um, uh, what is best to do then? Since I'm not going to launch full liberalization in Egypt, what are the scenarios uh, in, in cases um, such as Egypt uh, that uh, would be suitable for the context? Um, I totally agree with uh, Dr. Mona. When it comes to the first part, uh, I'm going to talk about Egypt Air because I was uh, the head uh, of the company for a while. Um, Egypt Air, when we started to, to examine opening all of our airports, uh, Egypt Air decided to change its operational uh, if, if, um, is, um, methodology to a hub. Uh, to a hub airport, uh, and uh, therefore we have our percentages uh, dropped from 40 to 45 because the operational rates were not very high. But um, on the other hand, uh, the whole model of air air was transformed. It has become a, a holding uh, company uh, with uh, subsidiaries, including one for domestic uh, transport. Uh, uh, the effects of which we are witnessing now, and of course uh, we had high prices for the for the tickets, so high uh, high fares. Uh, but now you have uh, Sharm El Sheikh and or Geda, you ha you you can have uh, 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 over 12 flights daily. Before 2005, you will find a maximum of two flights um, per destination. But now we have from uh, 12 to 14, uh, this is the main philosophy of hub uh, operation. Uh, and then I can distribute these uh, flights, uh, uh, whether domestically or internationally. The direct effect on Egypt Air, in order not to do it, um, to, 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 uh, to be unjust to the company, does Egypt Air operate on a purely economic uh, concept? No, it has a commitment towards the company it has security commitments um, commitments uh, Turkey is not a good uh, example or a good uh, analogy for example uh, Turkey has six uh, destinations or six um, uh, destinations to Iran and to Israel uh, what we call a high-end route um, 
But uh, while on the other hand, Egypt isn't allowed to do the same uh, strategy. We have uh, certain restrictive uh, conditions. Uh, we work under political uh, conditions that uh, some uh, routes should be opened with Africa. We offered, such as, uh, just as uh, Britain did, in order to have an added value to the national carriers um, with the addition of each route. So in order to, to have an, an airway with Kuwait or, or uh, Jeddah, we, wa we wanted to have another one to Eritrea, to Sudan, but uh, the private companies could not do that because the infrastructure in these um, the infrastructure is still weak. That's why I said that the analogy with Turkey is not really good because uh, because the air, um, Turkish Airlines is a carrier that's supported by the state. Uh, um, we we pay for charter. We adopted the Turkish model uh, in uh, when it comes to the charter flights. Uh, But uh, the model, the model was not perfectly matching Egypt, and we still work with our own limitations. A journalist uh, from La Masala, uh, the uh, editor in chief. Um, uh, of Masala. For 30 years, with all due respect, Mr. Semih, I have been listening to this defense uh, to uh, Egypt Air. And uh, this is what is hurting our economy, our national interest that should uh, come first before anything. You're talking about private companies, and you say that the, their infrastructure is not solid uh, and uh, is uh, fragile with all due respect. Uh, they work with hindrances. Uh, they run into a a lot of uh, uh, these obstacles uh, and for Egypt Air to stay as the political arm and to have full monopoly. In my own assessment and my own humble point of view, um, this point, this defense should not be valid now. I came here because I wanted to listen to the different liberalization stories. However, I listened to the same defense I've been listening to for 30 years. I want an argument that is satisfactory to me and to all the parties that uh, support this argument. Um, since 2011 up until now, um, with the different announcements coming from Egypt Air, we have $15 billion in losses incurred by Egypt Air, and you still say that this is the best uh, um, strategy. I'm sorry that I wanted to uh, intervene here. Uh, this is one of the mainstream arguments. Uh, I wanted to postpone addressing Egypt. We wanted just to address the methodology and uh, other other companies. It, I'm not going to talk about Egypt Air. You said that private companies. Uh, I'm talking as from. As an authority, you said that uh, private companies suffer from a lot of problems. Uh, what do you mean by that? You said that there are hindrances that these companies run into. So for me to be able to solve them, uh, to address them, I always say that you should state them, list them, and I will tell you whether I agree or disagree. Your answer is clear, and we can postpone the discussion. What about the time? We only have 10 minutes left. Good, good morning. Yes, I'm Romney, the head of the uh, chairman of uh, Air Cairo. It's um, a private company with public uh, funds. I agree with Dr. Semeh. 
that Egypt will never be able to grow without having a national fleet for national carriers. And Egypt will not be able to attract foreign tourism rather without having a national carrier that is supported by the state. We do not want to beat down, to beat ourselves down, and to say that Egypt Air is uh, incurring lots of losses because um, Egypt Air only incurred one billion dollars in losses, while the Turkish Airlines has been able to make profits since 2009 up until up until a, a coup but after the coup it incurred losses that exceeded 500 millions because of the impact on uh, tourism the, I had an experience, a past experience, when I approached the Ministry of Tourism and we started a project um, um, in order for the state to support private companies in order to, and uh, to attract investment um, and to attract for uh, and to attract tourism. Uh, we should rely on national entities and not any foreign agencies we should have agencies that totally support uh, tourism and uh, the state should have its own arms private companies should also play a major role uh, uh, hopefully if you have uh, any specific recommendations submit them in written form to the ECES We have two questions. Good morning, Fethan Ghaleb, an editor um, uh, in, in travel uh, publications. Um, all that has been said about opening the sky is really sounds really good so far. But Captain Zemeh uh, said that uh, Turkey is supported by the state. We have a problem when it comes to tourism. Uh, we provide the charter flights. Um, while I can use all of these resources uh, for the private companies and I can increase the number of flights, uh, um, and that's why I urge the ECES uh, to include uh, on its uh, to include in its plans how to utilize all of our resources to support uh, the operators and charter flights. Um, there were talks about establishing private companies that is, is um, uh, supervised by Egypt Air. Unfortunately, this has been going on, discussed over 50 years. We can liberalize the skies. We have new, five new airports that are going to be launched within months. Is so is it possible to liberalize the skies in these airports and to have the current airports as um, um, as one that uh, only uh, um, that is only that only operates the national carriers flights these are facts and not points of views we have taken lots of measures in order to liberalize civil, civil aviations, but the results 
are not uh, uh, up to the standard. Why? Is it political reason? Is it um, economic? This is, this is the question that should be addressed in a, a separate study. Why the discrepancy? This discrepancy requires a new study. Mohammed Hanu Air Service Egypt uh, and the head of air services company in Egypt and uh, Morocco and the United Arab Emirates. Um, also, I am one of those elected by Ayata to be the to be part of the grand uh, the uh, advisory group or the GOG, we have been speaking about liberalizing the skies with Europe. But Europe is not the whole word. It just came from, from Rwanda. We have Africa. This is a gold mine that is totally overlooked, Egypt air does not look to the people in Africa. We have some routes, only some routes, the, the major ones. But the smaller ones inside Africa are completely overlooked. When I was there, I was always asked, why? For me to go to Rwanda, I had to go to the Emirates and then I boarded um, Rwanda Air, or I could go to Nairobi, to Addis Ababa, and to stay 12-hour transit in order to go to Rwanda. This should not be the case. Ethiopian Air entered into an agreement with Chad. In addition to the fact that Central, that Ethiopia has entered into agreement with Central Africa, why shouldn't we seize this opportunity? Egypt Air is a major corporation. Of course, uh, the Ethiopian um, uh, uh, travel or air transport um, is another success story that should be covered, uh, of course, it has its own uh, impact uh, on uh, opening uh, skies of Africa. So the role of Egypt Air or the situation in Egypt will be discussed in the coming session. So we will continue this uh, presentation. Last uh, question before continuing the presentation. Uh, journalist at El Borsa newspaper um, addressing this question to Mr. Uh, Meged. In your uh, presentation, what about Sub Saharan Africa or Eastern uh, Africa? Are these uh, regions included in the study? Ethiopia, for example? because these markets have, has developed rapidly uh, in the recent period. Also, the uh, center drew uh, a road uh, map, I think two or three months ago, posing the question, do we need a private uh, company for uh, air uh, travel? And are we going to accept the idea of having a foreign uh, partner with the EU, for example? 
from a legislative point of view, we have many uh, companies having a foreign partner with 40% of the share. So there is no uh, problem in having a foreign uh, partner with an Egyptian uh, partner. And in the charter uh, flights, uh, operators might be 100% owned by uh, foreigners. And I want to stress that the facilitation done by the Civil Aviation Authority for establishing any airline uh, is really important as it was a slogan by 2008 until 2010. It would be easier compared to establishing a supermarket. So anyone can establish an airline. You don't have to own a plane that was only uh, introduced in the last six years to regulate uh, safety measures because many companies opened and then they closed their uh, businesses shortly after. So we had uh, some requirements to help the companies and uh, also we said the plans should be uh, new and we lifted all these conditions so we made it really easy for any operators or airlines to work inside Egypt. And there uh, was a number of negotiations and Dr. Adla was uh, there. And one uh, scenario was implemented was Dr. Yasser Ramli in Air Cairo. And I agree with you that the aviation sector in Egypt needs a charter arm to help to compete with the big airlines.